just landed in Austin, Texas, day negative two of the Adventureland tour. We start on Friday. Just comparing it to past shows and tours we've done, I think this one is not even a question how much harder we're going. I think the, uh, the final product we're gonna put on starting Friday is gonna, our goal is to, to wow some people. Maybe this is even the intro to the after movie and then we kind of contrast it with us talking about it at the end. We say how it did kind of happen in the snap of a finger. We say how it did kind of happen in the... Do it. Adventureland after movie, take one. The rehearsal, I think it's it's interesting because it's a combination of super excited and meeting the whole crew, some of them for the first time, the start of the tour, knowing you're about to embark on a, on a fun adventure, but also kind of the stress of like, is everything gonna work? The first three days were so stressful. Everyone was so miserable on the crew because it was just way too much to do just for the amount of people there. So we were spending time and then they had to put time after that we were giving all our feedback. Blackout and then on the first synth note, not the first kick of the drop, yeah. come in on that. Because so, we want to make sure you had a chance to like do the time code. Do I expect to come in tomorrow and still need a little bit of time, you know? Probably. We definitely knew that compared to the previous touring we've done, we wanted to step it up, level it up. When we first got one of the renders, we both saw that. We're like, boom, yep. Like, okay, it's gonna be a little more expensive, a little more, you know, manpower, whatever, but we gotta do that. That one is so sick. When we first saw it in person, it looked exactly like the render, which is the coolest part. <laughs> that could do cool things. Oh my God, that's cool. That is sick as fuck. <laughs> We are in V1, rehearsal day one of Adventureland Tour stage production. And this is the first time we've seen it at all, and it's looking pretty sick. This honestly looks almost exactly like the renders, which is impressive. <laughs> I mean, obviously we're, we're trying to put on a unique show. We're not just trying to stand behind the CDJs the whole time. So, especially with Casey, our saxophonist, um, and all these moments, we wanted to just create things that people would walk away and be like, oh my God, do you remember when two friends did that? And you obviously, they don't just happen, you have to rehearse them. So when we weren't allowed into the venue, like it was just too much going on, we just did what we could and we were playing with uh, Casey in the backyard, trying to figure out some of the moments where people stand, who goes out to front, when people go on top of the booth, in front, sing-alongs, all the little things that you don't really think about. Bars. Cool. But I think it's like, really figuring out where the run should end. Yeah, and where to start it. That was cool. That was pretty good. I like that one. Wanna yeah. try that one again? Yeah. And that's an easy one to remember because I stole that from Stevie Wonder. <laughs> Stevie Wonder uh, never saw good, it coming. Except maybe don't hit that last last note. We're just uh, choreographing the intro of our of our show. Have you ever seen the Netflix movie The Founder about McDonald's? There's a scene where they're on the tennis court kind of choreographing fries are over here, chop the onions over here. So, you know, it's kind of, we are inspired by our boy Ron. <laughs> huh? We're just a traveling van here on the road. Van broke down. How far have we been walking? I think we got another mile to go. Thank you. All right, I'm good. I'm good. How you need some <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> what are you nervous about right now? I'm not nervous. I just think um, I think everyone would love 87 hours in a day right now. That'd be sick. Got to be honest. I know earlier I said I was feeling like amped up, but I'm tired, man. Abby, how's the merch situation coming? It's coming along. Got quite a few more boxes, but everything's looking real good. All right, so this is our crew neck. A Dosa Migo shirt. Stop looking at my booty. There you go. <laughs> so last time we had Big Red the bus. This is maybe Big, big Silver. That's a bus, baby. That new smell. It actually smells like a new car. This is nice. Wow. Woohoo! Oh yeah. This is me. Should I should I get top bunk? I mean, I know you're this one. I don't care if you want to take mine. I'll go top. No, I'd probably go top. This, this feels way smaller than I remember. <laughs> this is Let me one see. arm length. Look. Yeah, yeah I would like back, top, left. Above me. Yeah, where I was last. Yep, yep. And you would like? I need to do a second one. 
Let's do that. <laughs> and Greg, you'll go last. Gregory, how are we doing? Ask me something. I'm sweating my I'm sweating my kabuchi off. I'm feeling good. Andy did backflip. Did you see it? I didn't see he it. He did backflip. Yeah, the, the whole preparation for that first show in Austin was pretty much down to the wire right until doors opened and they started letting people in. It's about to go down, uh, running through the whole thing, top to bottom. Let's see, the real show is in, we're playing in seven hours, but uh, this will just make us feel a little better, you know? Feel great about every single thing. First show, the Adventureland Tour, how'd you feel? It was, uh, it was a lot of fun. It was very exhausting, very warm. Out in the crowd, what do you think the average temperature oh, was? God, it had to be, it felt like 95 degrees with the humidity. I don't know, I'm not a meteorologist. So Eli's been an absolute health nut this whole tour so far. So instead of taking an Uber to the venue, we are walking with all our huge bags. Eli, what's up? Why are you making us walk so far? This walk is two miles, not one. I wanted to experience the sights and sounds of Dallas, Texas. What have you experienced? Not much, to be honest. It's 6.58, night two on the tour. The stage doesn't work. Doors are at seven. That's in two minutes. Basically, the production we brought is way too big for the amount of staff we brought. So, we're gonna be hiring someone. We'll see Adventureland coming to you, hopefully. <laughs> we were up there talking about something else and he was, I was, my back was to it. He was like, dude, the scenic stuff. And I turned around and Everything was changed. So you just talked to me before. It's 7.58 now. Doors have been open for an hour. We had a curtain. And uh, first act is on in two minutes. And we just got the radio that the stage is working. So things happen. What did you do to help it? Me? I, I think actually I was helpful. I got out of the way and then I always smiled at everyone I saw. Some epic fans in the front row. You're two friends, we're two friends. Let's get together. It's gonna be a big. That is a, honestly impressive graphic yeah. design. <laughs> One of the best nights of my life, dude. You're I like literally it. Literally awesome. It's gonna be my first ever stage diving experience. We're gonna see how it goes. All right, so this is uh, the stage dive review. You know, it started off a little shaky. His entrance was less of a dive, more of a stage climb awkwardly and, and like fall into the crowd, but then I will say, once he got in there, they lifted him up and they kept him going. He got a lot of miles on him. We are here in Memphis on the way to the world's largest man-made pyramid. What Japan's pyramid side. is not man-made, by the way? <laughs> That's true, <laughs> valid points, but we're going to the Bass Pro Shop and it actually looks quite massive. Quite large, very cold. Really, really cold. We got some baby alligators in this bad boy. You mean a fish fact? You always just, put a camera on me and say, give me a fact about XYZ and bro, I'm just a lowly DJ. Can you give me a fish fact though? Yes, sharks have no bones, only cartilage. We get to hunt, fish, love it every day. That's the prayer that a country boy prays. Thank God he made me this way. Hunting and fishing and loving every day. All right, it is time to sign the uh, VIP meet and greet laminates. Let me just show you how many we got tonight. God damn. So luckily, Greg has been working me out this tour and I feel like my biceps and tries are feeling pretty good. So I am ready for 
this motion. Picture with you us last night boys. and goes, I love you guys. And we're like, Thank you. And she's like, Did you guys have two friends, you right? Do originals? And you were playing, you were on stage. And so, this is a uh, 12 year aged uh, whiskey, so 10 years were spent in a barrel, that's good. Oak barrel. an oak barrel. And, and you also notice. This company was established in 1843, so you know they've had a long tradition in the family. So the pre-taste is smooth, the aftertaste is a little rough. Should be a little citrusy. I, I taste more fruitiness, yeah. You taste the orange? Yeah. You have 12 year age whiskey and then you graduate once you can handle it to the Natty Vodka. Thanks, man. <laughs> Poured it all over myself, but I'm getting hints of strawberry lemonade. A lot of hints of strawberry lemonade. And uh, vodka. No, I, I will never regret this decision Eli in my held life. My hand and that was like a peak. The of best my life. birthday present ever. Like I'm never washing my hand because Eli held it. So Jared hit us up on email a couple months ago, and he wanted to see if we could coordinate a marriage proposal during the show tonight in Atlanta. So we thought, of course, let's celebrate love during the two friend shows. So we have a couple very special guests we want to invite to the stage. Jennifer and Jared, come on out. Jennifer, look over there. Will you marry me? So typical day, we're waking up around maybe, let's call it 10 a.m. We've driven, the bus is driven overnight, so we're already in the next city from the night before. But, you know, a couple hours earlier, let's call it 7 a.m., most of the crew is already up and at it. They are unloading the bus. We also had a truck unloading the truck, going into the venue, getting the whole stage set up, starting the programming for the lights, for the lasers, for special effects. Um, you know, basically building the show every morning from scratch. I mean, the average fan might get to the show at 8 p.m. or whenever doors open, but they get there to a finished product. In reality, the crew's been setting up for 12 hours before that. Everybody's going to the party, have a real good time. We'll do a balloon drop. I'm not really sure when, though. When do you think we should do it, Greg? Well, um, Matt's FaceTime. Make sure you guys do. Yeah, let's ask Matt. <laughs> head of logistics. What do we got going on in there? This is a rare time where the head of logistics is kept out of the loop, and something's going on in there that I guess I can't know about until the time is right. Oh, what they are doing is they are building us an ice sculpture, a big booty man, to celebrate the fact that two friends sold out the Aragon Theater in advance. And it's gonna look amazing. I feel like it was a little more of like building things. So I'm gonna say- Maybe someone was painting shit. Like a sculpture, a shrine dedicated to us with our favorite things. <laughs> oh shit. That's oh, dope. Wow. <laughs> ah. Wait, so that's why it was smoking. <laughs> it wasn't hot, it was cold. That is wow. insane. Let me teach you. This is the first time he drank, so. Step into my office. Oh. Yeah, there's a little bit. You're f***ing that up, my G. I know. You hate me. Cheers, cheers. Thanks for having us, guys. Thanks for having us. Thanks for having us. Thanks for having us.
Greg's gonna make an after movie and there needs to be a good sound bite at some point for some transition that's hard to get out of. So this is that transition. Now go to some sick footage of us crushing it. I think it's cool after COVID being able to finally in person interact with fans and stuff again, you know, because everything was online for two years. So just being able to see people smiling and, you know, enjoying all our hard work was rewarding. One of the most memorable parts was this girl came up and she was like, can you scan my arm with your Spotify thing? And we did. And it went to two friends. Fresh Spotify. tattoo of her Spotify QR code. Legend. Oh, shit. This outfit is all over the place. You can roast it. It's like, have you ever seen Italian job? Go watch Italian job. Are you sure to stop doing leapers? You know what's funny? That we were locked in this exact room for basically a year and a half, just planning out all this stuff for Adventureland, and then we just, we did it, and it was fun. What's the difference in now? We're still in this room. We're still in this room, that's true. True. Thanks, guys. Hey, thanks hey, for thanks, coming. Thanks for coming. Thanks for letting us leave this room for a little bit. Hey, I'm just a kid, I don't need money. Little lost, but one day they'll talk on me. I'll have the world, hope you're waiting when I'm through with it. Oh, I'm coming home to ya. Hey, we just kids, don't it feel lovely? We sip rum and rice songs till we feel funny. Gotta get Big Booty Man up on the top of the bus for some sick content. But he's a little too heavy. His ass weighs a little too much for us to throw him up there. It's not that safe. Please don't break. So should Big Booty Man be like here and <laughs> We're two friends. Welcome to Adventureland. Your boy just sweats a little bit when things get spicy and I had some spicy salsa on my bowl and it was delicious. I ate the whole thing, but. He looks 10 times better than he did like 30 seconds ago. And you've been down in those chips too. I, I don't think I have. Yeah, you've been cranking on them. Say it to my face, bro. Dude, hold on. You've been cranking those chips. You got a smart mouth there. <laughs> Shipwreck, you guys are doing great. Keep it up with the bangers. Oh, baby. You guys are under arrest for being too sexy. Tonight's show is going to be loud, it's going to be fire. <laughs>
Casey, the acoustics out here. It's so nice. It's like the left side of my brain was thinking adventure, but the right side was thinking land. And you got, you know, they say you only use 10% of your brain, but for Adventureland, it felt like we used 100. <laughs> or even recording. Yeah, let's talk to me. I'll have the world hope you waiting when I'm through with it. Oh, I'm coming home to you.